The learning community was launched with the objective of uh, creating and promoting transfer of knowledge among executing agencies of FOMIN projects in Argentina and creating a network to promote synergies among them and um, dissemination of lessons learned and best practices. The um, community was launched in August of 2007. Uh, there was a specific event for the launching of the community which was attended by approximately 50 representatives from executing agencies, external consultants and community staff. The main actors that spur participation in the learning community in Argentina are executing agencies and FOMIN staff. The website in its current stage, which is its first stage, acts mainly as a information library or archive and as a way of contacting other executing agencies. In this sense, spurring participation means basically promoting the flow of information. So FOMIN staff promotes the flow of information by constantly updating the information in the website so as to keep it relevant and executing agencies contribute to the transfer of knowledge as well as they provide information to share with the rest of the community. A key to success in having a vibrant community, a vibrant learning community, is to base the, the development of products on the demand from its users and on the experience of the mean staff. The learning community in Argentina organized a number of different events and activities since it was launched. Um, some of them are training workshops. We had a training workshop on uh, capturing and disseminating lessons learned and a couple of training workshops on using the PSR. There were also special events uh, such as the launching of the learning community and another event that was organized for the launching of the website for executing agencies. In both these events, it wasn't just a formal event, they, after certain presentations, um, attendees were separated into groups to work on different issues. So it's actually also a way to capture demand from executing agencies. In the learning community, demand is detected through formal events and then informal everyday interaction with executing agencies. Uh, one example of the former was the event in which we launched the learning community where all the attendees were surveyed on their needs and demand demands and based on the information we captured we also organized the groups the attendees into groups so that uh, we work to refine uh, demands and get more precise information as a feedback the challenges we face moving forward are to capture experiences and lessons learned from finalized projects, taking the website to its second stage by incorporating new means of interaction among its members and decentralizing the upload information so the information flows in all directions. Hey, I'm Vashti Dupising. I work in Trinidad and Tobago. I'm a MIF specialist there. Uh, I was one of the people that assisted in launching a learning community for civil society and NGO partners in Trinidad and Tobago. One of the reasons why we thought a learning community would be useful in Trinidad and Tobago is that as a MIF specialist sitting in the country office, we see a lot of initiatives in the country, lots of different organizations, and we saw that many of them were working in the same areas but didn't know about each other. So we thought the learning community would be a very good mechanism for bringing partners together and getting them to work in a more collaborative way so they could not duplicate resources and they could get more bang for their buck and learn from each other. And that has been a key focus for our learning community. We have currently about 30 members of our learning community. We focus the learning community really in two areas that the MIF has been most active in in Trinidad and Tobago micro and small business development and youth training and employment. These are areas that are very important for not only Trinidad and Tobago but for the Caribbean. So between these two topics we were able to identify about 35 organizations actively working. We went beyond people that we had done projects with and tried to also involve other NGOs, governments and other agencies that were active in the field to get the learning richer. I think a key issue for maintaining an active and healthy learning community 
is to have a good facilitator to kind of round up the people, plan the agendas, and make sure that the content that we are looking to share is relevant and comes from the members of the community rather than being um, defined and delivered by us as, as an institution. My name is Karina Coburn. I am the MIF Specialist for Jamaica. I have responsibility for project identification in Belize and the Bahamas as well. There is the need for a learning community last year. Um, since I came to the MIF around two and a half years ago, we had a number of projects that had completed execution and a number of new projects um, which were just beginning last year. In fact, last year we had about five or six new projects and there was a lot of uncertainty among the new executing agencies about the procedures of the MIF, um, what is required of them um, in terms of reporting, um, in terms of the way that they process disbursements, lots of operational issues, and also in terms of execution and how to carry that out most efficiently. So we thought it would be useful to use a learning community format to exchange information between executing agencies. Hi, my name is Aminta Perez Gold. I'm from Venezuela and I am the ICT cluster coordinator for the MIF. The ICT cluster community started in year 2004 with the objective to expand the impact of the project through dissemination of knowledge. But at the beginning, we only used the annual meetings and the email as a means to exchange the knowledge, which it was very limited. So at the beginning of 2009, we considered the idea of having a platform to support our cluster. And then we developed PIMES Practicas, which was launched in June 2009. Mm -hmm. And we have a vision. We want to become in the reference community in terms terms of the use of ICT benefits of SMEs in the region. Currently we have 119 members um, from 18 different countries and our members are for one side the project coordinators but we always have uh, phenomenologists, people that really monitor and supervise project execution and we have also people from other organizations that also are involved with the use of ICT for, for that were facilitating the uh, interaction among the members one of them is more in charge of the content management, the other one is more for the side of the technical support. But really it's a teamwork. Also the people that is involved in the coordinator team for the mm -hmm. cluster is involved also in the promoting the use of the platform. And also what we call the hyper users, we have some key coordinators that are very involved and very committed with the platform. So they keep all the time participating and motivating the participation of other members. My name is Nobuo Tsuka. I'm a Japanese citizen. I am coordinating a learning community of dynamic entrepreneurship projects. We have 13 projects and 95 members from 15 different countries. Most of them are from executing agency of forming projects, but the community also includes other consultants and practitioners and policy makers as well. Bonjour to everyone, my name is Ana Castillo, I'm a Fomini Specialist in the country office of Uruguay. In our last survey, executing agencies have told us that the learning community has been useful to share documents to fit Fomini's requirements, change information about consultants, and even to organize activities together. Even though this means a lot of work, workload both for executing agencies and for Fomini staff, I'll tell you that all the efforts are worth.